Welcome back to Power Sap Entertainment, where my name is Carlos, because every time I get in a car, I get lost. I wish that was a joke. Your first car is a very important milestone in your life. It's when you transcend from being able to walk on the sidewalk comfortably to thinking, man, why aren't I in a car right now? It can be a time of great pleasure or immense pain. My first car was a 1975 Mercedes Benz. The way I got it was one day some random shady looking dude was in the parking lot where my dad parked his truck. Yo man, I'm selling this car right here. It's got tons of great features like it's green and you can drive it. You could tell that he was visibly done with the car and really needed the money. Look man, $5,000 and it's yours. I can give you $2,000 and this bag of Doritos. Done. I was 19 at the time and my parents would drop me off everywhere so when my dad pulled in with the car, I assumed it would be his. I don't want to drop you off anywhere. Learn how to drive here. First of all, I'm thankful that my dad is this cool. He's a truck driver, so it's obvious that he'd been saving up for this. I just looked at him and said something along the lines of, That's it. I'm buying you five mansions when I become a billionaire. Oh, and I got you a bag of Skittles. Six mansions. Oh, and also, I have no idea how to drive. My only experience driving has been either with Grand Theft Auto or Mario Kart Wii, and we all know how that'll end up. So my parents signed me up for some driving classes and that's when I got my first real look at the car. The cool parts were 1. It was green so it was easy to find in parking lots. 2. It had automatic windows so you didn't have to roll anything down. And 3. It had a hood ornament so when you were driving it looked like you had the car ahead of you in your crosshairs. There's sniffers on the rooftops! Get down! The bad parts were 1. It had no air conditioning so it was hot as hell. 2. The right mirror was perfectly askew in a way that you couldn't see anything and it was impossible to move it. And three, the most important part, was the radio reception was so terrible that the only song available was the latest pop songs. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dollars in my bank account. In my bank account. For the most part, everything with my driving training went fine except for one thing. As I was waiting to merge lanes, there was this car going a thousand miles per hour. And I had the genius idea to merge anyways because maybe internally I felt like I could get some Mario Kart Drift. Even though that's not how Drift works at all. You're doing just fine. Tokyo Drift! Oh my god, we're gonna die! I learned my lesson and never did that again. After failing my written driving test and googling all the answers, I passed. It's not cheating. It's more like spark notes. I nervously passed the driving portion because parallel parking isn't on it. And boom, I've got my license. This is where the crazy stuff happens. One day I hit up Conformed. Yo, just got my license. Let's hit up the club, which is code for, let's go to GameStop and start the games until they kick us out. On that day, GameStop was giving away shiny versions of Mega Gengar, my favorite Pokemon, so I brought my 3DS. I was still getting used to driving, so I was making a lot of dumb mistakes, like trying to speed up to pass cars. Somehow I ended up stuck between two trucks on the freeway and they both honked at me like crazy. Now in my old age, I know to slow down and let the car to the side of me pass and then merge, but I digress. We get to the GameStop and talk to the guy there. Yeah, man, sorry, we're all out of Gengars. Damn. Conformed ends up pre-ordering a game that he doesn't even like because, and I quote, the girl at the register was hot. You mean to tell me that just because a girl is hot, you'll buy something from them? What if she just strolled up to you and was like, I've got this snake oil here. Nah, trust me, bro, she was hot. We leave the GameStop and I'm pretty bummed out. When we get to the car, it just goes click, 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 click and refuses to start up. I keep trying, but nothing's happening. Now we're stuck in this hot booty car with no air conditioning outside of a GameStop, just staring at the employees with no idea what to do. Your car is a death trap, man. I'm melting. Melting. I call up my dad. One of you guys needs to get out of the car and push it to get a head start while the other accelerates. Conform gets out of the car and I go ham on the acceleration until we generate enough momentum to keep the car going. I was legit scared that we were going to lose this momentum that I thought about leaving Conform to die in the parking lot and picking him up later in my dad's car. Luckily enough, the engine doesn't turn off and Conform dives into the car last second. I guess the car was overheated or something. Just like my mix, I swear if you make another mixtape joke, I will end you. Now we're driving in this car super sweaty and relieved that we don't have to walk home. In my victory days, I end up going past the turn to the freeway and going straight. And I sort of end up cutting off this small silver car and it honks at me like crazy. Obviously, I messed up and I should have paid attention to the arrows on the street. I didn't hit the car, so let's just take the streets and get home. The silver car turns left, speeds up like 80 miles an hour, and then cuts me off. Now it's ahead of me. Okay, cool. Now I know what it feels like. It's not like I did this on purpose. The car then starts braking at random points in the street so that I'm forced to slam on my brakes to avoid hitting it. 
Let's just make a U-turn. That car is being annoying. I make the turn and the car follows me. Speeds up and then gets ahead of me again. I try to lose the car, but it keeps following me. And now I'm not an experienced enough driver to just lose them. And I wasn't about to lose my life trying to outspeed this car. Finally, we get to a stoplight and the silver car is on our right side. I look inside the car and I see these two sweaty looking dudes with suits and ties on. And on their dashboard is a cross. To me, they either look like very angry Mormons or very angry Christians. And I only mentioned this because at the time I thought maybe they wanted to forgive me. Oh, how wrong I was. <laughs> One of the motions for me to roll down my window and conform rolls down his window and starts mad dogging them. To my surprise, the driver gets out of the car and goes over to my side of the window. He taps on my windshield and I roll down my window to see what he has to say. You cut me off, you little Mickey Mouse clubhouse. You need to learn a lesson. Step out of the car and let's go. Conform starts getting riled up on the side of me, but I keep my cool. Listen, man, I just got my license and I made a mistake. I should have paid attention to the signs. And I'm sorry about all of this. Then this guy just looks at me, opens up his mouth, and spits in my face. The windshield cuts off most of it, but contact is made. Now I know what most of you guys are thinking. Man, if that was me, I'd be throwing down. It'd be Suplex City, Brock Lesnar, yada, yada, yada. But I handled the situation pretty calmly. I didn't want to get arrested, or even worse, risk losing my car. So I said something along the lines of, you're 40 years old picking a fight with a 19 year old. I made a mistake and I apologize for it. But that's no reason to act so immature and risk having a car accident. Even I was shocked at how casually I handled the situation. Then I just drove away. I told all my other friends about this and they reacted in two stages. One, dude, if I was there, I would have beat him up. You know, ultra instinct training under waterfall 300 years. I beat Whitney's mill tank. And two, dude, you almost got beat up by some Mormons. This was quickly followed by <laughs> them making lots of jokes, making fun of me. Oh, hello there. I'm sorry to bother you, but do you have time to talk about our Lord and Savior? These hands? Ever since that moment, all of my friends started referring to my car as the death trap because anytime we would drive somewhere, something crazy would go down. Personally, I prefer calling my car Big Bertha, but I digress. I think it's important to leave this video off with a couple of driving tips. Here's the two things I learned. No, no, wait. Here's the three things I learned. Always stay conscious of where you're driving. Don't lower your window for crazy people. And always wear your seatbelt. Right, guys? Smash that like button for your very own free car. For $100,000.